Hello everyone. Today's Gospel presents a beautiful conversation between a lawyer and Jesus. Five questions were raised in the conversation. Two of those were posed by the lawyer and three by Jesus. The lawyer asked Jesus, What must I do to inherit eternal life? The assumption behind this question was that there are actually concrete things that we can do to inherit eternal life. The man perhaps wanted to know the answer to the question so that he could be certain of his eternal life. Now, what does eternal life mean? Most people think of eternal life as life after death or a never-ending life in heaven. But eternal life is more than that. When the Bible speaks of eternal life, it refers to a free gift of God, a life containing peace, joy, hope, comfort and strength that is granted to us in abundance here on earth and in heaven after we die. It is a life each one of us can experience here and now and continue with it after death. Friends, eternal life is part of God's word. Therefore, as it is written in the book of Deuteronomy, which we read today in our first reading, eternal life is not up in the sky, nor it is across the sea. No, it is something very near to us, already in our mouths and in our hearts. We only have to carry out certain things to gain it. Friends, what must I do to inherit eternal life? The lawyer asked Jesus. As at other times with other questions, Jesus replied with another question. Jesus asked him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? The law refers to hundreds of laws given to the Israelites in the Old Testament times. Sometimes the law means the whole Old Testament scriptures. During the time of Jesus, the people used to learn by heart some of the laws and recite them every day in the form of prayers. One such prayer is from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. So knowing the law of God, the lawyer quoted two commandments or laws one was from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 5, which says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind. And then from the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 18, which says, And your neighbor as yourself. Friends, Jesus replied to him, You have answered correctly, and then assured him, that if he followed the scriptures, he would live. Immediately, the lawyer posed a second question. He asked Jesus, Who is my neighbor? Friends, Luke writes that the lawyer's first question was to intended to test Jesus. The purpose was to see how much Jesus knew and maybe to make Jesus look ignorant. But Jesus' reply put the ball in his coat. Now he was being put to the test. In order to avoid an embarrassing situation, the man asked the say, second question about who his neighbor was. He could not ask who is God. As a scholar of the law, he was supposed to know that. He was also supposed to know who his neighbor was. So he asked the second question in an effort to justify himself. Who is my neighbor? Friends, Jesus responded by telling the story of the Good Samaritan. The story was about a man, most probably a Jew, who had been beaten severely, robbed of all his belongings, and left nearly dead beside the road between Jerusalem and Jericho. After a while, a Jewish priest went down the same road. As a religious man, he should have stopped to help the badly injured man, but instead he went past. Later a Levite came along. Now Levites were assistants to the priest. He also went on without helping the man. A little later a Samaritan man came by. Now let us remember 
that at the time of Jesus, Samaritans were a racially mixed community with a Jewish and pagan ancestry, and were the despised enemies of the Jews. Under the circumstances, the Samaritan could have gone on his way and not stopped to help the wounded man. But he stopped to help him. He bandaged his wounds, he put him on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he could be safe and recovered and paid the innkeeper to take good care of him. He even promised to pay back whatsoever more upon his return. After telling this story, Jesus turned to the lawyer and asked, Now, which of the three men that passed by was a neighbor to the injured man? The lawyer was forced to admit that it was the man who showed mercy, in other words, the Samaritan who treated the injured man as the neighbor, not his fellow Jews who did nothing to help him. Jesus then said, Now go and do the same. Now go and do the same. Friends, what lessons can we learn from this gospel account? First of all, let us truly love our Lord with all our heart and with all our soul and with all our strength and with all our mind. Let us take the time to worship Him and praise Him. Let us put Him at the top of our list or priorities. Because worship is not just what we do in church, prayers and rituals, acts and ceremonies. Let us truly worship God in church and in everyday life, regardless of where we are because we want to worship Him. Second, let us love our neighbor as ourselves. If the Samaritan could recognize the wounded Jewish man as his neighbor and cared for him, even though he was despised and hated by them, we too should do so. All are our neighbors because all are God's children, and we must care for and love them just as the Samaritan man did. Jesus did not limit the definition of a neighbor. He expanded it to everyone. A neighbor is anyone whose need we see and are able to meet. A neighbor is anyone who is hurting, anyone who is in distress or danger, anyone in need of basic needs, anyone who needs the saving news of salvation, anyone in need of comfort and hope. Anyone who suffers from not only physical illness, but also emotional illness and spiritual illness. Friends, do you know someone who is hurting inside and outside? The person could be in our own families or community or at our workplaces. Try to help the person to heal the pain. Do you know someone who is hungry? Try to feed the person. Do you know someone who is lost in darkness? That person could be our own brother or sister or parent or even godparent or a friend. Try to bring the message of salvation to them. Let us remember that every human being who suffers from not only physical wounding but also wounds to the spirit and soul is our neighbor. Let us love, let our love for God truly manifest in our compassion, in our loving kindness and care for all those who are near and far, our families and friends, and also those who dislike us, hate us, and despise us. Amen. God bless you.